I'm very intentional about what language I'm using. I use a lot of imagery. Um, in terms of tone, I am told that I have um, a sense of authority from the pulpit. My name is Mary Vanna. I am an associate priest at St. David's Episcopal Church in downtown Austin. Good evening, uh, everybody. Glad to see you here at 620 something on a Saturday night. Uh, a few I am Karen Thompson, and I'm a pastor at the Metropolitan Community Church of Austin. I, I consider myself a passionate person, and I have a lot of emotion, especially when I'm preaching. It was definitely a culture shift for me to move from Memphis, Tennessee to Harlingen, Texas, and the Spanish influence was quite noticeable. I thought it was funny that people in North Carolina thought my accent was funny. And um, a lot of them talked about how slowly I would talk. Spanish was everywhere around, and the influence of the Spanish language and the way that people spoke English was also prevalent. My teammates in college, we'd, we'd joke about the different expressions that we had from our different um, regions of the country and, you know, who said, who said pop and who said soda water and who said coke. and who said fixing to and going to and cut off the lights and those kinds of things. One thing that's very noticeable in Austin is how Spanish words have been anglicized a lot here in Austin, which is different from my experience in other places in the state. So instead of Guadalupe Street, we have Guadalupe. <laughs> and those kinds of um, shifts in Manchac instead of Manchac. When I got to the point in my second career uh, as a minister, when it was time to look for other jobs, I, I thought to myself, I don't want to go to an interview somewhere other than Texas and sound like I just came in off the farm. I've mostly lived and been influenced by people from the South, um, either uh, Deep South, Georgia, Arkansas, that, that range. I uh, began to feel called to be a priest when I was 15 years old. My experience of being called was in you know, a number of directions. I had people um, noticing gifts and skills and making remarks. You'd be a good priest. And at the time, um, growing up in a clergy family, that wasn't necessarily very attractive to me. And I, I thought I would give, get just a Master of Arts degree, and as I was there, I. I realized well, this, this ministry thing really, you know, it, it really has a little tug on me. And, and, uh, but being a lesbian and being a Presbyterian, I knew that ministry was not possible. It's not necessarily a glamorous position to have. Um, and I thought I had other things that I wanted to do with my life. I thought, how can you kid yourself about doing the right thing and what courage you have or don't have because every day you are choosing not to live with courage. Every day you have the opportunity to speak out against what's unfair. You have the opportunity to be authentic and live your life um, and tell the world who you love and you don't because your job is in jeopardy because somebody might tease your children, because your family might disown you. And, and what I had to say to myself is there's a different way to live. But you'll notice if you read the Bible, that's quite a common experience. When people feel called to do things, they will often resist at first. I also was more clearly able to understand my own calling and feel that God was indeed calling me along with other women.